In this video, we're going to be looking at a concept called mathematical induction. A mathematical induction helps us prove a statement true for all natural numbers or for a set of natural numbers. So if we look at these following three statements, they are all true for all natural numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way. So if we look at the first statement, n times n plus one is an even number. I'm saying that's true for all natural numbers n. The next statement, one plus two plus three, all the way to plus n. There's a formula for calculating that. The third one there, we've got all the odd numbers, one plus three plus five plus seven. If I add them together, I get n squared, depending on what I choose for n. So we're saying that these statements are true for all natural numbers. And there's a lot more statements that we can look at. What we are looking at is how to prove that it's true for all natural numbers. So let's look at these statements separately. If I look at n times n plus 1 as an even number, let's just test a couple. If I say n is equal to 4, if I look at 4 times 4 plus 1, that gives me 4 times 5, which is 20, and 20 is an even number. If I look at n equal to 10, 10 times 10 plus 1, 10 times 11 is 110, that's an even number. Now I've shown it for two natural numbers, but we know there's an infinite number of natural numbers. So I cannot show this for all natural numbers. So we're investigating how can I prove it for all natural numbers without having to check each one. If we look at the next statement, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to plus n is a half times n times n plus 1. So if we look at n equal to 5, what that means is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That's the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is a half times 5 times 5 plus 1. So let's see if this works for 5. So I've got 5 plus 4 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 on the left. On the right, 5 times 6 is 30. A half of that is 15. So it works for n equal to 5. But the question is, does it work for all natural numbers? Can I prove it? I'm already telling you it's going to work, but we want to prove it. Now, just take note, we can write this in what is called sigma notation. I can use i or r or any other value there. i goes from 1 to n. It's just adding i together. So 1, 2, 3. And that gives me a half times n times n plus 1. So it's just a different way of writing the same thing. If we look at this third one, adding, adding together the odd numbers, we can write that in sigma notation as well. I can use r when r goes from 1 to n of, and how do I generate those odd numbers? 2r minus 1. And we're saying that that is equal to n squared. So the sum of the first n odd numbers should give me n squared. We can test it for a number, let's say n equal to 3. If I add the first three odd numbers together, 1 plus 3 plus 5, that gives me 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if I look at the right-hand side, we've got 3 squared, which is also equal to 9. So it works for n equal to 3, but yet again, we want to show it for all natural numbers. So this is the principle of mathematical induction. We're saying let Pn be a predicate about a natural number. So that's a statement about natural numbers. So Suppose the following two conditions hold. If P1 is true and whenever, whenever PK is true for some number K greater than or equal to 1, then the next one, PK plus 1, is also true. Then I'm saying I'm, I've proved it for all natural numbers. So let's just think through it. We're saying if I've got my natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh my goodness, 5, and they carry on. Somewhere along the line, I've got a k. The one after k is k plus 1. So we're saying, if I can prove that it's true for the first one, that's checked. And then if I say, if it's true for any one, I can prove that it's true for the next one, then I'm done. So let's just investigate this a bit. If I say it's true for any k, I can say that because I've already shown it's true for 1. So this means, if it's true for 1, I can prove that it's true for the next one, which is 2. So if it's true for 2, then it's true for the next one, and so on. It's like a domino effect. I show it's true for the first one, and then I show, if I've got any one, the next one is true. And that will imply that every time, the next one and the next one. All right, so let's look at a specific example. We're not proving it yet. We're just unpacking this principle. 
So let's look at this one, adding together all the odd numbers. So if I talk about predicates PN, we could say the predicate PN is this statement about natural numbers N, where N is a natural number. Now, I'm not saying it's true yet. We know it's going to be true, but I'm just saying this is a statement about natural numbers. What would P1 then look like? Well, P1 is just 1 equal to 1 squared. What would P5 look like? P5 is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. There's 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. Another one, 9. Because if I substitute 5 into this, I get 9. P5 says that must be equal to 5 squared. We're not proving it yet, but we can verify and check that it's right. So what would PK look like? PK is 1 plus 3 plus 5. Well, we don't actually know where K lies. We're just saying K is some number bigger than 1. So we just say it's somewhere, the kth one will be 2k minus 1. And that must then be equal to k squared. Well, what would pk plus 1 look like then? pk plus 1 is all of these and one more. So it's 1 plus 3 plus 5, all the way to the kth one, which is 2k minus 1. And then one more. What's the k plus 1 th one? It's 2 times k plus 1 minus 1. So that's the k plus 1 of 1. So that's equal to k plus 1 squared. So let's go back to mathematical induction. If we can prove the first one, p1 is true, and then if pk, if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true, then we're done. So we're going to use this assumption that pk is true to prove pk is one, plus 1 is true. So what I want you to notice in pk plus 1, and we're going to use it now, if I add, look at pk plus 1, it's all the pk's, plus that last term. So I'm not going to call it PK, but it's the first K terms. It's the first K terms, because PK is a statement. That's not a statement. It's the first K terms plus that last term. All right, so keep that in mind. Now we're going to use mathematical, indu mathematical induction to prove a statement true. So my PN is the sum of I is equal to a half N times N plus 1. So that just means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to plus n gives me that. So the first step is show p1 is true. So let's do that. We have to look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side because I can't just say it's true and then without proving it. So I'm showing the left-hand side is just 1. The right-hand side is a half times 1 times 2, which is 1. So my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. So therefore, I can say P1 is true. So I'm happy my first one is true. So now I say, all right, so assume PK is true. Now what's K? K is for, let's say, for some K in the natural numbers. Definitely not for all of them, because I've only shown it's true for one of them. So I know it's at least true for one natural number. So let's say, Assume pk is true for some natural number. What would that look like? pk looks like this. The sum, when i goes from 1 to k of i, is equal to a half times k times k plus 1. That's what pk looks like. All right. So now our last step is to show that pk plus 1 is true. So I must again look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side because... I'm not assuming it's true. I must show that it's true. So on the left-hand side, I've got the sum when i goes from 1 to k plus 1 now of i. On the right-hand side, I've got a half times k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. So now my quest is to show these two are equal. So let's go to the left-hand side. The sum of the first k plus 1 terms. I now saw in the previous example that that's the same as the sum of the first k terms plus that k plus 1th term. The k plus 1th term in this case will just be k plus 1. It's not always k plus 1, but in this case I just have the numbers 1, 2, 3. So the k plus 1th term is k plus 1. Now why did I break it up like that? Because of my assumption step over here. I can now use this because I've got an answer for the first k of them. So that is this one, a half k times k plus 1. And I want that to now look like the right hand side. That's this part plus the k plus 1. 
right, let's just tidy up our right hand side. That's a half times k plus 1 times k plus 2. Okay, so here I see there's two terms. k plus 1 is a common factor in both terms. So I take it out and I get a half k plus 1. Not good enough. Let's take a half out of the second term. So I've got k plus 1 times a half. If I take a half out there, I get k plus 2. And we are done. That's exactly the right-hand side. So therefore, my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. So therefore, I've shown that pk plus 1 is true. So what I've shown is the first one is true. And then for any one that's true, the next one is true. So the first one is true, means it's true for two, means it's true for three, means it's true for four, and so the dominoes fall. So then I can therefore assume, of, conclude that Pn is true for all natural numbers n. And that's the principle of mathematical induction. In this next video, we're going to look at some more examples using this principle.